This is going to be the final video where we get our game in Python speaking to us via a text-to-speech engine. Similarly to how we did that in Scratch where we use the text-to-speech engine and we've got some available blocks. This is gonna be the trickiest tutorial because I can only hold your hand so far. It's gonna be up to you to install some things on your machine. I can't possibly be there for you. But I know that you've got this, so let's get stuck into it and get our game speaking to us. Hey crew, it's the Surfing Scratcher here, teacher surfer, programmer, and on this channel, I help curious learners just like you along on your learning journeys. Welcome back to our From Scratch to Python series where we created a game in Scratch and we're translating across to Python so we can get some familiarity with a text-based programming language. The first thing that you'll need to do is jump across to Google and Google this, PyTTSX3. I'll leave a link down below in the description, but we wanna click on the first result and that will take us to this page here, which is the text-to-speech engine that we're going to be using. We're gonna come back to this page to install it, but for now, we're just going to scroll down and you can have a read of the project description there. And we're more interested in this usage. So what we're going to do is implement the code first, and then we're going to install it. The reason for that is we can't use it on Replit. We have to install it locally on our machines. And I'll walk you through that process midway through the video. But for now, in this block here where it says usage, let's copy all of these four lines. I've just highlighted it, Command C or Control C on a Windows. Let's go back to Replit. Okay, so back here in Replit, we're at the top of the file in our main.py file. I'm just going to paste those three lines there. You'll see the first one of those lines is this import py ttsx3. So we're importing that library into our file here. And that's gonna give us access to all the functions that we can use, okay? Now, we've got these next three lines here. I'm actually just going to cut those lines because we don't wanna use them here, but we do wanna use them. So let's cut those lines. And I want you to find the function in here that is our say word block, because that'll be the first function where we will implement our text-to-speech. Okay, so I've gone down here and I found our say word function and there is our to do comment to implement the text to speech. So I'm just gonna give ourselves a little bit of space and paste those three lines. I'll fix up the indentation there just by pressing the tab. So let's just go through these lines line by line. So we've got engine. Engine is just a local variable inside this function and we're assigning pytsx3.init and all this is doing is just initializing the text-to-speech engine, okay? And we're storing a reference to it in this engine variable. Then what we can do is call this say function on the engine, and we will say some text here. Now, I'm going to replace this text because we don't wanna say that text. We wanna say the word that we pass into here. All right, we're assuming that this word is equal to a string. The thing that we do is on the engine, we call run and wait. And this function starts the voice speaking to us on the screen. It will say what that word is, it will run it, and we will wait until it's finished. What I'd like you to do now is copy those three lines, and in the say sentence function just beneath it, we're going to paste those lines there as well. The only thing we need to change is instead of word, we're going to say the sentence. The last place we'll need to implement our text-to-speech engine is in the ask the user to spell the block because we're going to clear the console so the user can no longer see the word on the screen, but then we need to speak the word. And that's why in previous tutorials, we inserted this word parameter. And now we can just paste that in there because we want to say the word. Now, just before we move along, I'm just going to jump around and I'm going to reduce our delay here from four to one second because when I've run this before, the run and wait block, it can take a little bit of time. So we won't necessarily need that delay there anymore. Okay, the last thing that we need to do in our project here is scroll all the way to the bottom and just under our start spelling function definition, we need to also start spelling. So I put this in here and it needs to be on the level of indentation on the first level, so no indentation here you can see that we've got a line running down from the def of the function and it needs to be on that level. If it's one level in, it's gonna be inside start spelling and this would be a recursive function. 
So we need to be out here. And the reason we do this is because when we run the Python file, we execute it in the command line or the command prompt, we need to call this function to start our game. So this is pretty much the same thing as when the green flag is clicked in Scratch. Just going to scroll back up here, back to our ask user to spell word. And you'd notice that we've got this line of code and we're kind of repeating it here. So something that you could do is wherever you see code duplication like this, it's a good call for a function or a good time or opportunity to make a function to wrap all this code. But we'll press on with the tutorial. And it's as simple as that. That is how we're going to implement our text-to-speech engine. The problem is we can't run it in Replit. We don't have the browser capability to be able to use text-to-speech with this library. I tried it a couple of times, I couldn't get it working. So we're gonna to have to do it on our machines. So let's take you through the installation process of Python and pip and the text-to-speech engine. Okay, what you will need to do now is, depending on whether you're on Linux, Windows, or a Mac machine, you'll need to open up your command prompt. On a Mac, that is terminal, and I'm just going to open up what's called item here. So there we go. I've got my command prompt open, and I'm inside my directory. Now to see if Python's installed, you just need to type Python 3 dash dash version, and you'll see if you've got a Python version here, that will be all good. This will be referencing the main installation or the system installation of Python. But if you don't see Python here, then you'll need to install it. Let's go back over to the browser to show you how to do that. Okay, so we're just over here in Google. I've just typed in install Python. You can download the latest version of Python from the python.org website, and it will take you through a package installation of Python for any of those. So that's a really quick way to go and install Python on your machine. If you scroll down, I like the guide that is by Real Python. And this guide just goes through the steps of installation on all the different machines and a couple of different ways to go about it. What you do here is just choose the machine that you're working on and go through the installation setup. Now back over here in Google, there's a link to how to install Python the smart way. And what this is referring to is creating a virtual environment for Python. What this means is that it will create like a copy of the Python, like a clone of it, if we're talking about Scratch language, and place that clone inside of a folder. So we're not messing around with the main version of Python on our system. And we might do that is so that we don't run into conflicts down the track when the Python version gets upgraded. So if you're interested in that, I check out this how to install Python the smart way and it will take you to this article. Okay, so now when you type in Python 3 dash dash version, you should get a version of Python. Now there's something else that we need to check that you have installed. And the way that you're gonna do that is type Python 3 dash M and we're gonna be referring to pip here, which is a package installer for Python and press dash dash version. So make sure that you have got it installed here. If you don't have pip installed, you could use homebrew to install it, or you can check out this link here and it's down in the description. You can bootstrap it by just copy and pasting this code on the device that you are working on. Okay, I'm assuming that you've got pip now installed, either using homebrew or through using this command prompt. Now let's go back to our Python text-to-speech engine page. Okay, I'm back here on the Python text-to-speech engine page. And what you'll need to do is copy this link up the top now, pip install pytttsx3. Let's just copy that to the clipboard and head back over to our command prompt. Now I'm going to paste that into our command prompt. And what this will do, it's gonna tell pip to install this library. Hit enter and you'll get a whole bunch of output here. So I've already got this library installed. You'll see that the requirement already is satisfied, but it might take a little bit longer for you to do this. Now, you should have that Python text-to-speech engine installed. Now, let's head back to Replit. Okay, we're back over here in Replit and the stage is set. We've got the text-to-speech engine installed, we've installed Python. Now all we need to do is run it on our machine. The way that we're gonna do that is head over to the files button here and press the three little dots in line on the same bar as the files, not just on the main.py, okay? We're going to download this whole package as a zip. Now that'll be in your downloads folder or another location that you specified. We can head back over to the command prompt. Cool, so I'm over here in my downloads folder and I can press a command called CD, which stands for change directory. Now over here on a Mac, 
I can locate where that spelling game is and I can drag and drop to get the file path of where it is. You can just type this in manually as well, but I'm not going to do that. So I'm going to delete main.py and we're going to just go to the file extension for where that spelling game is and then we'll press enter. Cool, so now we're in the spelling game folder. Cool, and the last thing that we need to do is run the Python program. So we can just type python3 main.py. And as I hit enter with any luck, we will be able to start to play our game with the text to speech engine. All right, let's do it. Dash. Should she try to make a dash for the car? Dash. Okay, then we type in the word, press enter, bath. and we get our next word. Take a nice warm bath and relax for a while. Bath. Okay, so as you can see there, there are some delays uh, between going from the text that's on the screen and the text-to-speech engine. So you might wanna go back into that Python project and modify some of those sleep values to your preference. That's it. You have just completely translated a Scratch project into a Python 3 project. Congratulations, that ends the coding component to this series. In the next video, we're gonna check out some refactoring. We're just gonna go and revise a few things that we've done, and I wanna show you where you can go to next. What are some resources out there if you are pretty interested in Python and you wanna continue your Python journey? So I look forward to catching you in that video, but until next time, I'm off to go find a wave. I'll catch you in the next one.